Hello and welcome to another bonus episode of the How to Film Weddings podcast. My name is Nick Miller and here I'm getting ready to present to you day two of the Filmmaking with Intention workshop. Um, it has been a great couple of days. Uh, we are doing these workshops in conjunction with the launch of our course, the Complete Wedding Videography course. If you are interested in checking that out, head over to completeweddingvideography.com. Again, we had some technical issues with uh, the internet and all that kind of stuff. So I wanted to uh, edit this together and upload it and get it to you all so that you could, uh, you know, maybe if you watched the replay and you saw that there was a, a big chunk in the end uh, that was missing because we had to jump over to Zoom. And so it's a, a whole big mess. Anyways, I've edited it together. Thank you for the grace that you have given us with this as, uh, you know, it hasn't been the most, the smoothest experience in everything that we do. I think, uh, you know, as we started this one, John's computer actually like freaked out and it, the screen went blank and he disappeared and he had to come back. And then his daughter came in. It was a whole ordeal. And then the internet cut out on us. Oh, again, because this is a recorded replay, all of the giveaways that we talk about in this uh, workshop have been done. You cannot enter to win. I'm sorry about that, but we know that the information is still really solid and it will help you in your business. Thank you for uh, being a part of this workshop. We are trying our best to get this info out to you. We know that it will really benefit your, benefit your business if you continue to be intentional into 2022. So I'm going to go ahead and jump into this bonus episode of the How to Film Weddings podcast. We really hope that that you enjoy nick yes. we're a couple minutes late because the internet knock on everybody in the internet world knock on wood our internet is fast we have great speeds we're wired in yesterday the internet was not happy a lot it of dms not happy telling with us telling me that they loved seeing me squirm <laughs> i wish i had a punching bag but here we are oh we are here and we are live we're a few minutes late somebody called us daddy miller and daddy bun it's whatever i don't mind um but it's here, a big day it hello. is a big day hello hello so we want to let you know that we have a backup plan in place just in case everything you know does not go how we want it to go um so that we hopefully will not be as interrupted as we were yesterday we will we will see so if you can hear us in the comments please let us know if you can see us if everything's going well just uh let us know over there uh is the backup plan the zoom link we were just working on and we would yes. post that in the comments yes if if something if, happens if I, we will plan. yep we will post a zoom link in the comments pin it so that you can find it. We will actually leave this up somehow. Doesn't matter. That's what we're going to do. So it's going to work because everybody it's knocked on wood, work. which is great. Holy Spirit's been activated. I saw uh, a lot of things going on, um, but I'm very excited. A lot of people are very excited because we're doing some fun stuff today. Oh, we are doing we want to get right today. into it. We want to get right into it so people can hear us loud and clear. We are on day two of filmmaking with intention. That is myself and Nick in front of some Ivy. Mm -hmm. That is, mm -hmm. uh, that is us. We are that is us. the host of the how to film weddings podcast. You know who we are. We just love putting photos of ourselves on the internet, how this workshop is going to work around 60 to 70 minutes today. Um, mm -hmm. because there's a lot we want to go through on this second day being intentional. Mm -hmm. We're going to have yes. giveaways and Q and a at the end. Yes, Nick, we have a course. We do have a course, the Complete Wedding Videography course is open for enrollment. Um, and we've already had quite a few people join as, as one of the celebration things that we like to do when we do this is for the first 50 people that join the course, okay, uh, we are doing a celebration gift in our private Facebook group. And so um, if you've purchased the course in the past, you are actually entered in to win this and then the 50 and we are about a third of the way um, nearing that halfway point. So here are or the one person will win all of this cool stuff. Okay. Uh, that is five projects with Webflow. It's about a hundred dollar value, 20 gig projects. Weditor is going to, uh, audio master any of your films. It's a $350 value. And then lens rentals is giving out a $500 gift card, uh, to one person. So you can rent all of the cool stuff that you've been wanting to try forever. Our friend Paige Hulse at the creative law shop is giving away a template bundle so that you can make sure that your contracts and all that stuff is up to date music bed 
the incredible music bed is giving away away one year wedding subscription as a $730 value. Uh, Love Stories TV is giving a business listing. This is like front page on their uh, you know website when you search for videographers, business listing kind of thing. That's a $900 value. And then the big one, we are giving away an M1 Pro MacBook Pro. I think that that's actually the name, the M1 Pro Mac whatever it's a two thousand dollar macbook we will give you uh that away for free if you know you're one of those first 50 people to buy the course <laughs> but today we have giveaways and it's it is some good ones john yeah i mean uh the dji air 2s anybody uh this is the drone that nick has been using um incredible. no big deal incredible Indeed. drone it might just be the best drone for wedding filmmakers i know the mavic 3 cine I, I just don't know i don't know where i'm at with that one i know this one and i know the footage from it is insane also mm -hmm. lens rentals today we're giving away a 300 dollar lens rentals gift card we always recommend renting before you buy nick if you if they want an extra entry for our drone giveaway they can text and, and drone and Yes, they can text drone. That's just the complete wedding videography website. Like on there right now, you just go to that landing page and you can enter in your email. Right. If you would like an extra one, text drone to 918-300-4617. You might leave that on the screen for a second. I'll leave it so on there for a second. Send that. So we made it easy. Everything is at completeweddingvideography.com. So that's where you will go to enter to win. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I, everyone, I am still live, but somehow um, I lost John. I don't know where he went. So this is really cool. Um, the stream is perfectly well and going well. I don't know what's going on here. Sorry, buddy. Uh, I guess I'm holding on to the fort. Um, yeah, so I'm going to just uh, keep on going here. I'm going to throw this back up on screen. Sorry, there's going to be a black dot where John was. Um, yeah, here we are. Hold on, gotta click this over here. Um, yeah. Okay, I don't, I don't know where, where John went there, but I'm just gonna keep on piling through this. That black square, whenever he comes back, it should pop up right there. Um, so if you want uh, an extra in entry, uh, go into that drone right there and uh, text drone to 918-300-4617. So yesterday, day one, we talked about being intentional about your business with your numbers and your booking. Uh, we have the replay video of it. Um, I, uh, you know, there was all the internet glitches and all of that kind of stuff yesterday. So we uh, uploaded it to the Complete Wedding Videography site. So if you go to completeweddingvideography.com, you can watch the replay of that. It's right there at the top. But we wanted you to be intentional about your numbers and your booking. And that's what we're talking about. And today we're gonna keep on digging with that. And we want you to be intentional with your ideal clients. I know so many people, whenever you just get started, you're, you're, you know, you're choosing this or you're choosing this. You're not sure uh, where to go or who to book or you're taking any weddings and you just want to make money and we want you to try and be more intentional about it so for both john and i in 2021 uh we both worked with i would say a vast majority of our clients were the types of clients that we wanted to work with uh, there's always going to be an outlier in that you know that five to ten percent of people that uh couples um you know that uh just maybe aren't your people but 90 percent of our couples were the ones that we wanted to work with they were the exact fit for us okay we got paid ridiculous amounts of money if you go back and watch yesterday's presentation you could see that you know i was i'm averaging for 2021 around 7100 dollars per wedding john was in that you know eight thousand dollar range and as we move into next year into 2022 i'm pushing close to eight thousand john's at like 9500 or above something like like that, um, you know, we are really fulfilled creatively. We're getting to shoot the types of weddings that we want. We're getting to go places that we want to go. I've gotten to travel to uh, Cabo, Mexico and Charleston and up into the mountains in Colorado a few times. I'm fulfilled creatively. I know John has been traveling a lot of places too. Okay. Um, we were able to make plenty of money and, and have margin with our time, with our money, with our relationships, with our creativity. Okay. So we have, uh, you know, built this. And so, hey, uh, John, you're back there. Can, uh, can you hear me? Can we hear you? I, I can hear you. Can you hear me? I can hear you. I can hear you. Um, Did your computer just freak out over there? 
the power in my entire office just went away for half a second and came back. Okay. Um, okay. Everything is trying to stop us from getting this info <laughs> out there. And no, Backblaze is not running in the background. Nothing is running. I know how to do live streams. We've been doing this for three years. This has nothing to do with my competence, but I appreciate the messages. Um, here we are. Whenever I jumped on, you were glitching out a ton, but I think we're back. Um, I'm not sure if the internet is back. And, the internet you know, is like great going? on my end. I am looking at it, and it says that we have perfect stream. So we are we are okay, good great. over here. here. So uh, I was just talking about the um, you know with the weddings that we've been able to book and the couples that we have and all that stuff. We have plenty of margin with our time, with our money, with our relationships and our creativity. And those are the types of things that we are really want you to build. F- to and build for in your life. We want you to have more time. We want you to make more money, but you know, we want you to be fulfilled creatively and have those relationships, whether it's with, you know, uh, friends or, you know, your family, your children, whatever. If you don't, you know, have, if you're not intentional with what you're doing, then you might miss out on some of those things there. So, uh, John, why don't you take this one over? All right. If I'm here, I'm in, I'm in. You are here. I'm here. You're here. So I guess the question to ask next is who here wants to only work with the perfect couples for you? If that's you, throw up a little fist bump emoji in the comments or a hands up emoji, let us know. Um, And we're going to be talking, you know, how do we be intentional about these couples in these inquiries? So how do we how, attract these couples? Yes. 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 Okay. I see what you're going. It's like each line is like its own slide. I missed that. I'm sorry. So. Oh, I skipped ahead. I'm sorry, man. I'm I'm all frazzled, but I'm okay. I'm okay. You good? I'm great. I, okay. My internet's working great today. Everything seems to be working. I'm back <laughs> in the saddle. I'm sorry. Okay. So the question that we're asking is how do we attract our ideal couples? Um, why are we, why are John and I getting the same inquiries over and over again? I actually got a, uh, inquiry for a Cabo, uh, wedding a couple of days ago. I got one for a New Mexico mountain wedding, uh, over the weekend. And I'm continuing to get these types of weddings that seem to be my ideal client. How are we going about doing that? John, have you ever gotten this question? I have. It's a, it happens a lot. It's the whole email. Hi, how's it going? What are your prices? And the reason that you get that that question a lot is couples just don't know what else to ask, and we have to guide them. And so most of us, we really aren't that intentional about who we're trying to attract. I know that was me for the longest time. And if you're not intentional about that, um, you're going to end up having to take what you get because your mindset is wrong. If you're not in a mindset of being very intentional about who you're going to work with. So if you don't determine who you want to work with, we promise you won't ever get to work with them. Absolutely. That true. That's very, very true. And all starts with intention. Are you being intentional about what you're putting out there? Are you being intentional with the message that you are sharing with the films that you are uh, creating with the, um, you know, what you're posting on social media? And we're going to talk about all of that today. So right now, real quick, okay, we want you to think about your favorite wedding from 2021 or maybe 2020 or 2019. We want you to think about what was your favorite wedding um, from the past year. And then what made it your favorite wedding? Think about that. John? Yeah. What about the couple did, did you connect with? Like when you're thinking about this perfect wedding, your favorite wedding, why did they connect with you? What was it about this couple? Um, a spoiler alert, <laughs> you have to take time to work with your ideal couples. It takes time. Um, And that is something that I think a lot of us, we see all this education and we hear people's stories like Nick and it's like, oh, well that's Nick's highlight reel getting all these inquiries. But I remember a time where Nick was not getting the right inquiries and he did a lot of things that we're gonna talk about today and then added time to it to get to where we are. 
Yeah. People just aren't going to, um, you know, if you're not putting the right stuff out there, if you're not doing the stuff we're going to talk about today, um, you know, your, your correct client is not going to weed through all of this stuff and hunt you down and then give you lots of money and make your life easy. Okay. It takes a lot of work to work with your ideal clients. You have to be super intentional with everything that you do. It's more than just throwing stuff on the wall and seeing what sticks. It's about, uh, you know, doing what you know will attract those right people. John, why don't you talk yeah, about this when, when it comes to time? Yeah, for me, it like I made the decision that I wanted to start doing way more expensive weddings and I knew there was a lot of things I needed to change and I did make those changes. I did seek out advice. I did grow as a business, but then it still took me 24 to 36 months until I was only working with my ideal couples. So don't be discouraged if you're like, I've been doing this for six months. Where are all of my destination European weddings or whatever it is that you want to do? You have to have a system, you have to work it, and then you have to add time to it. Yeah. Um, and we've shared on our podcast time and time again, you know, I, uh, right when John and I met, I was charging about $3,000. I had done a little bit more, but my average price was around that amount. Um, and over the last, you know, 24 to 36 months, I have been working hard on all these things. And, um, you know, now I'm getting my average price, you know, up close to $8,000. And, you know, I'm, doing, you know, I've done, you know, over $10,000 and I'm traveling all over the place. It's because we have been intentional about the things that we are doing and the things we're showing. It just, uh, we need, I needed time to do it and it takes a while to do it. Yeah. And you might be sitting there saying, Hey, that's a nice flex, Nick. That's a nice flex, John. That's great. But how does that help me? And you, you might just be saying to yourself, like, how do we attract these ideal clients? Um, it, and it starts with being very intentional, very specific, and it all started with dot, 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 identifying our ideal couple. Um, and I don't want to say that there's like, you know, some people are like, I don't like to, you know, identify my, my, whatever, my ideal couple, because I don't want to pigeonhole people. Like, I don't have an, like an exact uh, replica every single time, but I know that there are things about my couples that I mm -hmm. love and I want to work with. And those are the things I'm looking for. So you have to kind of get weird and very specific with this. Yeah. Um, you know, some questions that you should ask or consider, you know, how much does video matter to them? What about their personalities do you like? What about their story do you like? How much do you want them to pay you? Where do they shop? How old are they? What is their job, etc. cetera. And, and, and the reasons that you're going through and you're asking these things is because whenever you have a, a, a clear idea of who you want to work with and the type of people you want to work with, it's easy to have branding and messaging and stuff so that uh, people will uh, can find you. You are speaking directly to them. Whenever you go on your Insta stories or whenever you write an Instagram post or you go live somewhere, like speak to this exact person. And that's so much easier whenever you are, uh, you know, trying to sell and build this brand. Yeah, the more that you know about your ideal couple, the more you can learn how to connect with them. And again, it goes back to being intentional. If you're thinking about your favorite wedding of 2021, what was it about that wedding? Maybe that'll help you clarify a little bit more. Mm -hmm. My favorite wedding so far this year, one of them was when I went to Charleston, South Carolina. The couple was madly in love. They loved their faith. They, they were, Their family was really important. The video was very important to them. There was a lot of things about it that made it very, very important. So um, I hear my daughter coming in, so I'm going to mute myself for a second. Oh, boy. Okay. Why were they your favorite? How did they find you? These things, these things that John was just talking about. Another big thing when it comes to identifying who your ideal client is and all that is you have to learn to say no. OK, uh, that that is something, especially if you're a people pleaser or if you, uh, you know, you just really, um, you know, need a booking and you need some money. You are way more desperate to take on some of those things uh, if, um, uh, you know, say some of those things if the um, I'm, I'm sorry there. You just have to learn to say no. OK, you're more desperate if you don't have margin, if you don't know where you want to go, if you don't know the types of people you want to work with, you're going to say yes to everybody. But whenever you figure out who they are, you can pull out, OK, I don't think I want to work with this person because I don't think I want to do this because. So you need to learn how to say no. OK, uh, I, John's a people pleaser. I'm a people pleaser. Uh, we want to be nice, but that, 
that doesn't mean that they are your ideal client or your ideal buyer, okay? When you take clients that are not your ideal buyer, that are not your ideal client, you are robbing someone else of booking their ideal client. Okay, um, you know, if, if someone wants to work with me and Jen, my wife for Wild Oak Films, and they are not quote unquote our couple, but there's another company in town that that is their couple. Now I am maybe robbing them of their dream wedding and maybe I am robbing them of breaking through into that, you know, next level of where they want to go. So uh, just be be thinking about that. But again, if you don't know your numbers and the number of weddings you want to book, like we were talking about yesterday, you are more likely to take weddings like this that you don't necessarily want and then you are not reaching your ideal couple john i'll let you take this one yeah when you take clients that are not your ideal buyer this is like a perspective shift that i had to really look at and it, it was like some i think somebody i forget who it was that said it to me but when you take clients that are not your ideal buyer you're actually robbing that couple of working with a better match i want you to think about that for a second just saying yes to somebody is not necessarily always the best thing for you. I'll let you take the next one. Yeah, after you identify your ideal buyer, what you need to do is, and this is step number two, be intentional with your brand and your website. It seems that, you know, with COVID in 2022, all this stuff that happened, that websites and branding was like a major shift and a major focus that a lot of people had because like, well, I'm not filming weddings, you know, let's hone on, hone in on all of this stuff. And we want you to be really intentional with what your brand looks like, what it feels like, and what your website is, okay? Does your website speak to your ideal buyer, okay? This is a screenshot of our homepage, my wife and I's brand, Wild Oak Films, and uh, you can put it in the chat, but whenever you see this screen here, and this is actually a little video uh, header that we have, whenever you see this, what, this tells you a lot about who we are as filmmakers, but it also tells you a lot about kind of the couples that we like to work with, that we like to travel, where we like to go. This says a whole lot about us and who we want to work with, and it's just one little vi video image that's on the top of our website. John? Yeah, your website is, and we've said this I think a couple of times before, but your website is basically the living room for your business. This is a place that you want people to be comfortable and you want them to stay for a while. This is what you should be thinking about on your website. And if you've identified your ideal buyer, you should want to make it comfortable for them. What do they want to see? What speaks to them? That is going to be the next step for you in getting these ideal clients and asking yourself, what is my strategy to get people from my website to my contact form? I've made them comfortable. I've made them attracted to me and my brand and what I'm doing. How can I now get them to want to contact me? Yeah. So the 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 thing the biggest thing that I that has helped me and my business and John and his business when it comes to the types of work that we're showing is show what you want to shoot. And if you've been in this industry for any amount of time at all, you have probably heard this phrase, show what you want to shoot. Okay, this is a video on our website. It's, um, you know, uh, one of my favorite videos that we have ever put together. And this is a couple that got married in Cabo. Uh, they're the type of couple we want to work with. It was a location that we want to work with. Everything was set up. And I cannot tell you how many inquiries we have gotten over since the release of this one because we, because of this video. And whenever people say that Isaac and Allie is, you know, the film that got them you know to reach out to us that tells me something that they are somewhat in line with your um with your vision for filming okay and john i want you to talk about this because i think it's really really important your website is for you what do we mean by that yeah for the longest time i tried to make everyone happy with my branding my website i didn't want anyone not to like me and I'm, I'm the kind of guy that's just like, okay, how can I get the most people to like this? How can I, then I learned that I needed to make the website for me and not be afraid to only show the things that I want, only show the videos I want, only say the words that I want, the pictures, like that is your place. You don't have to put something on your website just because you filmed a wedding for somebody. If you're tired of doing barn weddings, 
don't put any barn weddings on your website. Stop doing that. Don't like, or you, you know, I know Nick didn't love doing Catholic weddings. So he stopped doing that. He stopped showing, you know, the, the ceremonies from Catholic weddings or whatever it was that you don't want to do. Your website is for you. And so whenever I made this shift, this 24 to 36 month shift in my business, I really started looking through every single part. And the question I would ask you is, are you intentional with every single video on your website, every line of copy? Like, is this something that you've actually been intentional about? Because that's what this workshop is about. We want you to be intentional, mm -hmm. like we said yesterday, with how many bookings you're going to take, the money you want to make. And now it's more about who we're working with, who we're being attractive to. Because if you don't do that, you're going to take all kinds of weddings. And this time next year, future you is going to be very, very upset with current you for not figuring these things out. So the next thing on that list, Nick, I'll let you talk about. And that's just making pe making it easy for people. Yeah, um, the the one thing that you want to do is have calls to actions everywhere. Your website should be designed in a way that it gets people lost in your website, but also so it makes it easy for them to contact you. This is just, you know, a phone grab, but I have, uh, you know, on every single page, I have book us for your wedding, contact us, something like that on every single page. In our footer is our email, and then I have a contact there really nice you know, on the website so that they can contact us. Okay, your contact form. Here's some things that we recommend You know, if you're kind of thinking about you know, updating yours or whatever. Obviously, you need the name, the date, um, and the venue. Um, and, and if they're working with a planner or photographer, something like that, um, you know, I know one thing that John picked up um, from a friend a while ago Ago was asking about a DJ or a band and he would know that if they had a band they were probably automatically propelled into the type of client that he wants to work with because bands are typically only playing at weddings whenever the people have a certain amount of budget okay and then the other thing that we do is you know we ask them for their story and this also helps us connect because if people are like getting married want to know more they might be my client. I don't know. They just might be very direct and kind of going to, but the people that pour more of their life and pour more of their story into the contact form, I think they're more likely to be the type of people that we want to work with. I kind of touched on the weeding people out, but John, why don't you kind of go and go through this? Well, you're doing it. You're doing a really great job. I, I will. I just want to say thanks. You're, you're, you're actually killing it. <laughs> um, on the contact form itself, one of the things that like I am asking, you know, which vin vendors they've already booked, uh, that kind of thing. Um, but my goal with the contact form is to actually weed out as many people as possible for mm -hmm. me and where I'm at in my business. I'm pretty booked. I don't want to take any more bookings I've, unless it's like a, like an ideal, ideal booking for me. And so scarcity is there and I'm not just trying to get everybody and their mm -hmm. dog to reach out to me. So I have enough info to weed people out. And then the next thing, oh, I think you skipped ahead to the next oh, slide. Sorry. Um, sorry. Is It's okay. Elbow. Um, yeah, you want to gather information that helps you determine if they're a good fit. And yes, I asked them if they have a band or a DJ and that's not like a, you know, a really shallow thing or whatever. I've just learned that most of my ideal clients that I'm working with are working with a, bland, a band and a planner and then I've, they tell me who their photographer is. I can kind of look up and see if I'm a good match. And so that helps me determine if they're a good fit. If they've come from, you know, it's one of the questions is like, how'd you hear about us? And if they say, oh, well, Jimmy and Susie recommended me. And I know Jimmy and Susie was a wedding where they really went all out. It's a different mindset going into it. So your contact form, again, your website is for you. Your contact form should serve you and understanding whether or not you will be the right fit for a couple and it's not just about how much money you're making. It's just I ask questions about their story, how important video is to them. Those things are really, really important to me, and it, they may not be as important to you. So you make your contact form based on what it is you need to weed people out and gather the information you need. Another yes. thing we do to weed people out, Nick, is putting your prices on your site. We have lots of content on this, but we wanted to hit on it. Um, there's a lot of different schools of thoughts about, like, should you put your pricing on your site? If you want your full sheet on the, you know, on your website, you're giving all of the data. If you want your base price, you know, starting at this much, you can do that or no pricing at all. And with each of these things, Nick, there are different ramifications of, of having those. Why don't you touch on those real fast? Yeah. If you put your full pricing sheet, uh, my guess is, is that your inquiry level or your inquiries are going to go way, way down 
but your booking rate will probably be pretty, pretty high. And that's because people can see exactly what it is that they want. The problem with doing this is people are going to pick and choose and, and they're going to decide maybe what they want rather than what they actually need. And that's totally based on the pricing. Okay. If you have a base price listed, your inquiry rate um, might go up a, or your inquiry rate might go up a little bit, but your booking rate is probably going to go down. Um, and that's just because, especially if you know, you're a, you know, above $3,500 in your pricing uh, people are just reaching out and they don't, they don't read the, the, what your base price is. Like they, they don't even look for that. They're just reaching out to you. Now, if you have no pricing at all, I guarantee you that your inquiries are going to go way, way up. So if you just want inquiries and you like to sell and you're trying to get more bookings, like this might actually, even if you're fairly inexpensive, this might be a great way to go. So you can get people on the phone and you can start talking to them. However, if you are more expensive and you have no pricing, you might be wasting a bunch of your time because you're going to get a lot of inquiries but you know, people with a thousand dollar budgets might be reaching out to you whenever you start at $5,000. So these are all things that you just need to be aware of when it comes to the different types of pricing. And remember with all of this stuff, when it comes to uh, having the right brand and, and getting the right couples and showing the right, it all takes time. Okay. It all takes time. Um, I'm we're now, we, uh, redid our website. It was like last June or something like that in 2020. Um, and like really right now, about 18 months later, we are really seeing the benefits from what we did a year and a half ago. Okay. So some of this stuff takes time and, and you're planting seeds, but eventually it's going to catch up with you. And now it's like all of the inquiries we are receiving are not all of them, but a majority of them are places that we want to travel, things that we want to go to, uh, you know, couples that we want to work with. It just takes time. So John, we talked about being intentional with your clients. Am I cutting you off here? Did you have something you wanted to add? No. Okay. No, you're, uh, you're great. Okay. So uh, we want you to be intentional with your clients, figuring out who they are, intentional with your brand. And then three, and John, I'll let you take this over intentional social you media. Have to, you have to be very intentional with your social media. And if you look at this, a lot of people are just, and, and it drives me bonkers. A lot of people just, it's like, oh, well, I need to do an Instagram reel today because that's what's important or I need to do. And there's no intention behind. It's the same thing with edits or the same thing with a lot of, but we just kind of see what everybody else is doing and kind of get tossed to and fro with it, whatever is happening. And that is not the point we have to be intentional and if you look at the order of what we're talking about today we're identifying who it is that we want to work with now mm -hmm. we're getting our brand in place and now we can be intentional with the social media and so your vibe should flow with your website we can't go into all of the things social media today there's just not enough time we do go into all of that in our course which we recommend grabbing but your social media should be looked at as your curb appeal and if you look at nick's uh, website based on the way the color, the vibe, the mood looks versus social media, his Instagram, there is a tone, there is a mood. The curb appeal is what's attractive if you think about it. And then it invites them into the living room to hang out. So the more that you can create a curb appeal with whatever social media is, if you're consistent, that is going to invite them into the living room. So then you can walk them through that process of getting them to contact you. Yes. Okay. So speak to your I ideal buyer, to your ideal client with every single post. You know, uh, I've heard other people, you know, make a list of, you know, five things that you, you know, five, five things that you want to touch on or whatever. And then every post should be those five things. One of those five things or multiple of those five things, you know, just an example right there, but speak to your ideal buyer with every th single post show off what makes you, you, I know John has really leaned into this the last few years because he said that he was just vanilla for so many, cause he wanted to work with everybody. But John, what happened whenever you made that switch from being a uh, a logo company, Redeem Production, it was just your logo, to like John Bunn being the face of your video company? <clears throat> yeah, and as a people pleaser, I was just all about like not making anybody, you know, not like me. I just wanted everybody to like every one of my films. And so I started leaning into making edits that made me really happy. I started showing my face more on social media. I started talking about the things that were really important to me, family, heirloom, all the stuff that was really important to me, Taylor Swift wearing Crocs. I don't know, just like stuff about me that that was attractive to people. And I lost some followers. And if we're only worried about the follower count, 
that's not going to be a good idea because you're always going to just be chasing a tail, a rabbit's tail or like your tail, Mm -hmm. a tail, some kind of tail. But typically this is the, like the gateway. Um, I I went ahead on a slide. Sorry. Um, your, your curb appeal, like your social media is typically this gateway to get people to your website. And I really want to hit on that. And if you're showing off you, I go to, we do a lot of like Instagram or social media reviews for people. And a lot of times I can't tell anything about the person that is behind, you know, the curtain. I, I can't tell anything about them. I don't see them anywhere. I don't feel their personality. It just feels like another wedding videographer. And I would encourage you to really think about some of the things that you enjoy the most and lean into those things and really show yourself off and get comfortable with being you in front of your camera. Because the next slate, Nick, it is better to have 100 real followers than 10,000 fake followers. A lot of people care so much about that number, but I can tell you, if you get caught up in the numbers alone, you're going to be in for a world of hurt. Instead of having, like, just imagine 100 real people that all want to book you for their wedding next year. That's way better than 10,000 random people. Like you would have Mm -hmm. so much work with a hundred people. You don't have to have this massive following to speak to your ideal audience. Nick, I'll let you. Yeah. Yeah. Let's, let's just dream really big. What if in 2022 you had only 500 followers on Instagram, but they were real followers. They were your people. They were your clients. They were the people that wanted to work with you, your ideal clients. Remember, we're not just talking about your mom or your dad or your brothers or sister, you know, whoever, but real followers that loved and cared about your brand, just 500. Now, every time you post, you're going to have real engagement with them. You're going to have uh, likes and shares and all that stuff because they actually care about your brand. And how, how much more could you grow your business if you focused on reaching those real people? Okay. So what would that do for you? So maybe your folk, I am glitching. glitching. Okay. 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 Let's hang on a second. We've been going well for a while guys hanging on here. I think, I think you're right. Uh, okay. I am back. I am back. It's back. Okay. Sorry about that. that Facebook glitch. can only handle 40 minutes of you. <laughs> I think that's what it is. This is what maybe. happened this time yesterday. Oh, maybe, maybe it is. So we'll keep going. Hopefully we can power through and get this thing done um, and out the door without having to go over to zoom. So again, what would this do for you and your business? If you had real people following you, maybe instead of focusing on that, you know, 10,000, 20,000, whatever followers on Instagram, you tried to reach those 500 real ones and see what would happen. So we've talked about being intentional with your client, being intentional with your brand, intentional with social media, and step four here. So we're going to go back over here to step number four, and this is getting your ideal couple to inquire with you. So when you determine your ideal buyer, you can determine your strategy on how you want to reach them. Okay. It, remember how, see how we're building everything. You have your client, then you have your website, then you have your social media. And now as we're getting inquiries and stuff, you can figure out how how to reach out to them, how to speak exactly to them. So what are you doing to get in front of your ideal couples in today's busy world? Is it an Instagram reel? Is it a blog post? Is it going live? Is it store? Like, what is it? What are you doing? And think of those things here. So what are you, again, blogs, are you writing blogs? Do any of you blog? Uh, are you paying for advertisements, Facebook ads, that sort of stuff, uh, bridal shows, vendor referrals, past clients, What are things that you're doing to speak to those couples? John? First of all, 92 of you over here already. That's pretty great. Um, Appreciate that. Um, So yes, as Nick was saying, we have been building this content today. You know, you can't know how to advertise until you know who your market is. You can't know who your market is until you've determined who that is. And so what speaks to your couple, like your couple, your ideal couple, every single brand, should have their own messaging and own unique strategy to get more couples to reach out. And so if you're thinking this through, I think a lot of us just have this jumbled up mess of like, what is the order to do this in? How should I figure this out? We start a business and we're just like, uh, this is how I'm going to, I'm going to just do a wedding for a friend. I'm going to do, and there's not an intentional plan. And until I got intentional, I was charging the average in town, two to $3,000. And you can do that 
forever and shoot 40 weddings a year and make a good living. And that's fine. But if you want to be a filmmaker with intention, you have to think through these things. So every single company should do this. And you want to build a brand around the buyer that you want. So you have to take time to figure that out, or you're just going to keep doing the same thing, expecting a different result. So you want to speak directly to them and lean into what makes you different, not just you as a person, but what makes your films different? What makes you stand out? Don't try to fit in. You want to stand out in this busy, busy world. You want to stand out to other vendors. You want to stand out. And when you start doing that and making a wave and doing things differently, that's when you can start raising your prices because you build this scarcity around your brand and this momentum where more and more people want to book you and you can't get booked, like you're already booked. And they're like, oh my goodness, book John as fast as you can. And that's what happens. You get that flywheel turning and that's where you can be a filmmaker with intention. Yeah. You don't have to be attractive to everyone. And the thing, you know, the age old saying, or, you know, whatever it is, whenever you are trying to reach everyone, you end up reaching no one. Okay. You don't have to be attractive to everyone. You just have to be attractive to the right ones. Okay. And that's, as we're talking about this, getting them to reach out, you need to be attractive to the right people. The more you lean into this, the more you will love what you do. Okay. If you are working with your ideal clients, if you are working with people that you want to work with, if you are uh, filming these types of weddings, you are going to love what you do over and over again. And remember, these things take time. It's taken both John and I a 24 to 36 month period of being intentional for us to finally get where we want to be. Okay. 24 to 36 months, it takes time. The last thing we want to talk about is being intentional with your education. And we're obviously talking about considering joining the Complete Wedding Videography course. This is just a sliver of what we talk about um, inside the course and being intentional with other filmmakers and the community. This is what it's all about. Like this is, you know, we made the price $14.97 or $149 or $147, something like that to get in. And we wanted to make it affordable. And we wanted you, we really want you to consider joining the Complete Wedding Video course. I'm glad to stay on after we do the giveaway here on Zoom and answer questions. Um, Zoom's great for that face-to-face kind of thing, but we'll just say one booking, hopefully more than pays for the entire course. And if you've already purchased our course, put in the comments how it's been for you. How has this course helped you? Has it helped you be more intentional? There's a lot more that we can, like we want to go into, but we just only have so much time. So um, the last thing here is just, are you going to be an, an, I'm sorry, are you going to be intentional as a business in 2022? Because it is coming. We want to help you. We want to be there for you. You can obviously see our hearts. We want to elevate the wedding industry. So um, yeah, Nick, anything to add for the homework? Uh, No, no, uh, I I agree. So what we're going to do for homework is post it in the thread. Um, we're, or we're going to post this picture, post it in the thread, describe your ideal couple, couple and what action steps are you doing to reach them in 2022? This is a lot, uh, a little more intensive than, you know, we had you do yesterday, but, um, you know, this is the type of stuff that is going to get you where you want to go. And in 12 months from now, you are going to be very thankful that you did this. All right. So the course, again, uh, if you're interested, three modules, business, shooting, and editing. I will run through these real quick because if you are here yesterday, you saw this, uh, but you know, running your business, uh, setting that up, shooting, we go through a bunch of, oh, one of the cool things that's actually in this business section. Uh, we have started recording Zoom calls and uploading them so that you can learn from the things that we are doing. So John actually booked a $15,000 wedding this last week, and it is exclusively in this group here. Uh, over here in the shooting section. Lots of information about, you know, from when you're showing up on a wedding day through the end. Um, you know, we have a few behind the scenes never before seen in the public. Uh, and you, those are a part of their, uh, editing. We talk about some, uh, things with editing, some, uh, ideas with it. Uh, and 
One thing that I do is I sit down and I film myself editing an entire wedding video from start to end so you can see me do that and learn not only what I'm doing but why I am doing it. Some things that have just been added, we have all of our pricing guides. These cost $150 for one and you have access to all three of them so that you can pick and choose which one you would like to use. Just added yesterday, a couple days ago, Sam Jacobson from Idea Action Consulting uh, just uh, made this mini course, small tweaks that you can make to your website to make you more money. It's a $250 value has been added to the course. We have all of our digital templates from how to film weddings. Uh, again, we're continuing to upload with Zoom calls that I am doing and John is doing with couples behind the scenes. If you pay in full, you get posing for wedding videographers. Uh, it's 20 of our favorite poses, our go-to poses, and we show you how we're interacting with couples. And then we have a premium option, a premium bonus where uh, you know you can get a one-on-one -on -one mentor session with us. It's $500 more. John and I actually charge $500 for a mentor session so you get that. Then you also get an in-depth film review which is a $200 value as a part of a premium member. And then we have the YouTube Mastery Mini Course which is a $400 value. John and I just go through uh, uh, what we've done in YouTube to grow our channels and all of that. And as always we have a 21 day money back guarantee so you can come in, check out the course and if you uh, don't want it anymore uh, then you know you can get your money back. We'll put our money where our mouth is. That's what I'm trying to say. Go through it, experience it, and if you don't, um, if it's not for you, then that is okay. Well, there you have it. That was day two of the filmmaking with intention workshop. We hope that it was really helpful to you and your business. We know that if you implement these things that in, you know, 12, 18, 24, 36 months, your business will be drastically different and you will be able to charge more, make more and have more margin in your life. One last thing we want to tell you about is our Complete Wedding Video course is on sale. Head over to completeweddingvideography.com. That's completeweddingvideography.com to pick it up. We are so excited for all of the things. Thank you so much for being a part. And until next time, we will see you.